Or I turn away. Thank you. Don't worry about me no Been so long about this way Time should pass slow Rain 
Rainbows and down that highway, ocean breezes blow. They'll know they lead the way, voices tell me so. You all been asleep, you and I receive me. Well, we stand. Yeah, I love it, girl. From it to me, my girl is walking. When she passes, each one she passes goes on. Girl, from it to me, when she walks, she's like a summer light. Swings so cool and sweet and gentle. And when she passes, each one she passes goes on. Stay when she walks to this 
Look out all the scenes coming through. It's all over now, baby blue. Highways for gambling, better use your sense. Take what you got. Carpet too is moving under you. It's all over now, baby blue. Leave your stepping stones behind. There's something calls for you. Get about. tree. 
Your rain falls like crazy fingers, peels fragile thunder, keeping time. From a rainbow tapping at your window, touch your hand so swift, so bright, strange fingers of light.
Who can stop what must arrive now? Something new is waiting to be born. Darkest Still by your side Shining inside God, I think We start to decide Where we should go We just ride Carousel ride, reaching for that gold ring down inside. Never could reach it, just fits away. But I try. plainly for you love still rings true Oh, sisters, and mercy, they are not departed or gone. When for me, when thought that it just can't go on, brought me their comfort, later they brought me their son. been traveling so long I lay down beside them I lay with my confession still there you touch both my eyelids I touch the dew on their head If your life is a leaf that the seasons tear off and condemn, we will bind you with love that is graceful and green as a stem. Yes, you, you must leave everything that you cannot control. Guess what the family there comes round to your store. Been where you hate, think I can see how you pin. If you're not feeling holy, alone that says that you sin. can read their dress by the moon. 
Don't think I'll be jealous if I let the sweet and your night. We were lovers like that, and besides, it would still be all right. We were lovers like that, and besides, it would still be all right. to strike
butterflies full of flaws. Who knows the cause? Living with the memory of a love that never was. And I've done everything I know. Trying to make you mine. Time washes clean. Love's full unseen. Living in a memory when all I want was a dream. And I've done everything I know. Try to make you mine. And think I. Summer's gone now. Cars will get to car wheels through the town. And they tell him, take your time, it won't be long. Do you drag your feet? So the circles down.
coming true. There'll be new dreams, maybe better dreams of plenty. For the last revolving year is through. Out of season, they go around. Thank you. I think we're about something here for a year, yeah. Stars shine bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Birds singing in a sycamore tree. I dream a little, dream of me. Say night, night, and kiss me. Just hold me tight, tell me you. We gather here, clearly come for peace. Please, please, and for we should. 
show you how we play these strings. Testing. Thanks, Mary. Testing. Yeah, give her another hand. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, so we're going to talk today about what Jesus looks like. Um, and I want to start with a quote from Henry Matisse. He says, to look at something as though we've never seen it before, requires great courage. So may we have great courage today as we talk about this. So just off the top of your head, I'm going to throw the question out right away, Dewey. What does Jesus look like? Describe him to me. <clears throat> Anybody? Yeah, so he's, um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, you were asking me to. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm giving you oh, a heads up, but you can answer the, for sure. No, I think some, somebody else um, had, had a comment with starting. So I, Absolutely. I might be totally off base, but the Bible says heaven is more than you can imagine. So I imagine Jesus would look different to everyone what they imagine what he would look like. I don't think you're off base on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who else? Descri I've never seen Jesus. I've never seen a picture of Jesus. I just landed here from Mars. Describe Jesus. Okay. And that's not far off, is it, Jerry? <laughs> Well, it's not like Solomon's head of Christ. Uh, I feel that since he lived in the Middle East, 
he would have all the characteristics of someone in the Middle East. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else got any other ideas? Well, one, um, one thing that I really love, I, I've got on my desk, uh, it's a bookmark, and it uh, has a picture of kind of the Last Supper, but each one of the disciples in this picture is a different race, nationality, culture. So you've got an, an, you know, uh, an, an Indian from India, but you've also got an American Indian there. You've got a cowboy, and you've got a uh, Latino. And, um, and this phrase under it says, um, and Jesus is in the middle of all of these. And um, the phrase under it says, um, what language did, did Jesus speak at the Last Supper with his disciples? Okay, mm -hmm. so there's all these different kinds of cultures and languages and stuff. And you flip it over and it said, their own language. You know, so the idea is that Jesus speaks all of our own language. He's, um, Jesus actually, uh, in God's eyes, looks like a Latino. Jesus looks like a Norwegian. Jesus looks like, you know, so and so. But, but uh, I agree with Betty that technically he was a Palestinian Jew, as they say, uh, a Jewish carpenter. Um, but, um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I just love that thing that, um, what is that verse that says, in Christ there is neither Jew or Male Gentile. Or female, Jew or Gentile. Yeah. East or West. And you could almost Galatians say, uh, in Christ there is, there is neither Chinese or Latino, you know, either. No. Anyway, other, other comments on? I think more of, instead of characteristics, uh, color and what have you, I just think of him as looking very peaceful and loving. It's, and you know, in, in a lot of photos, do you see him a glow around him. I think it's there. Yeah. I really do. So, but I think he, he would probably look like the area where he grew up. That it, mm -hmm. I really do. Okay. Absolutely. <clears throat> he definitely would have looked like Kenny. Absolutely, purple and all in the hair. I'm sure he had purple hair. <laughs> I think so. Uh, <laughs> I think, I'm not sure where it is in the Bible. Didn't it, didn't it make a reference to say that he wasn't especially uh, physically attractive? Isaiah 53 says men esteemed him not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which, of course, is no big deal. But uh, the, the pictures we have of him, of course, are, you know, he was an uh, Anglo, you know. <laughs> um, but he was Semitic, physically, he was Semitic. Jews and Arabs are all Semitic, you know. Um, but, uh, of course, he came for the whole world, you know. I remember a conversation between George Jefferson and Archie Bunker. <laughs> and Archie was oh, telling tell. about how all the, actually, Carol O'Connor was nothing like this in real life, but, you know, he played yeah. the part. Archie was telling him, well, all the presidents were white. And uh, George Jefferson says, well, you can have your lily white presidents because we got God who is black. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but there was a comedian, I can't remember which one, he talked about having seen God in a vision. And of course, everybody wanted to know, well, what's God look like? And he said, she's black. Mm. <laughs> the shack, yeah. When, yeah, absolutely. When I have visited black churches, um, it's uh, it, it's kind of a visual shocker at first to see um, pictures, you know, these huge pictures of Jesus as a black man. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, because I'm so used to something. Um, uh, if you guys have ever seen the wonderful play Book of Mormon, um, the house is brought down by the scene when um, he's talking about that Jesus was a, a North American, that Jesus uh, came to America. Yeah. And then, and um, because the guy that comes out looks like a surfer guy from San Diego. He's got long blonde hair. I am, uh, you know, yes. um, <laughs> Jesus. And, 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 and the, the song is called All American Jesus, you know. And, uh, you know, it looks like a, you know, 20 year old from the urge San Diego. To, to bust into song now. So, right. <laughs> I have the Book of Mormon on. Sure. Uh, 
So we have images of Jesus, and especially if you go to a Catholic church, you see Jesus on the cross, very emaciated, very white. That got put into art for a little while. You'd have this alien-looking Jesus, you know, always white. Um, some of the other images of Jesus are what, what I lovingly refer to as the bearded lady Jesus. Uh, he just looks very effeminate, but with a beard. Um, you have iconography of little baby Jesus, and then in popular movies, Talladega Nights, I prefer the, the baby Jesus. You pray to the Easter God or the whatever God, I'm going to pray to the Christmas God. Um, you have Jesus is my boyfriend, and this is less a visual and more a listening. If you listen to popular Christian music sometimes, they sing of, as if Jesus is our boyfriend or our girlfriend, this intimate uh, person in our life. Very irritating, you yeah. know, it's, it's like... Um, and then there's Celebrity rock star Jesus, another great uh, show, Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Kevin Smith did a movie where they made Buddy Jesus, because Jesus just looked so rough for so long, so we had to make him happy. Voltaire said that God created us in his image, and we returned the favor. We did that very thing. We said, okay, we're, we're starving and dying, so we're going to make Jesus look starving and dying. We have effeminate-looking men, so we're going to make Jesus effeminate. So we return to God the favor of creating God in our own image. Don, did you want to say something? I was sort of going to say exactly that. Um, you know, only Catholics generally see apparitions of the Virgin Mary, for example. So clearly what we end up seeing has a lot to do with who we are and how we are and what we are. And lifting up on what... Um, Neva said, you know, she sees not the physical form, but the, um, the peacefulness, the love, and so forth, which is something deeper than just the outward experience or appearance. Since we say that we were created in God's image, well, clearly God does not look like this, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> so we're talking about something different than the physical appearance. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I want to give a little bit of a pushback, too, because we, we do this with Jesus. We say, hold on, I'll, I'll come back to that thought. First, we're not the only religion that does this. Buddhism does it as well. If you look at a Thai uh, Buddhist versus a Chinese Buddhist, you have different versions of Buddha and how Buddha looked. And so we're, this is a human tendency to make our deity and our image. Um, but we have to be careful when we push too far into the, I agree, that there is a peace, there is something different about Jesus, um, and that is true. The tendency, though, is to go so far to the ethereal that we never connect back to the reality that Christ was a person with a heartbeat in a zip code, and if we can appreciate Christ like that, it helps us better appreciate the other people in our zip code who have a heartbeat, who are human like us. So, yes, he is all those wonderful things, and now glorified, seated at the right hand of the Father. God sees in him all of creation. And, yes, and, he is this person with a heartbeat who didn't brush his teeth, because that's not what they did in the first century, and probably didn't comb his hair very often, and was out in the sun, so was very tan, and, uh, you know, he was a person. And so um, when we can appreciate that, we can kind of appreciate God a little bit more. I'll never forget in one of my theology books for seminary, I was reading this very dry text, but I stopped dead in my tracks when it said that now within the Trinity, you have humanity because Jesus became us. And so now we are there with God. So what is that? bring or what does that bring to mind for you that all of our human faults all of our human failures of course Jesus was perfect but now the that very human heartbeat is within the trinity what does that mean for you or was the textbook wrong that could be that could be the other side of the question no, I, I do love the, um, all the references of, <clears throat> you know, we could touch him now. He dwelt among us. He was one of us. He, he was flesh. He was our flesh. I, I, I really do love those, 
those things. Thanks for calling us back to the humanity uh, uh, part of Jesus and not not uh, only the deity part mm-hmm. of Jesus. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I have to give a, a, a shout out for <clears throat> several um, of the, um, the Jesus um, movies that have been done about his life, Jesus of Nazareth and some others. Um, <clears throat> I think they did a very good job of picking the Jesus um, actor. Um, <clears throat> I, I just, I, I'm, I'm like, as I watch a, a few of these, I'm like, wow, you, you know, they, they, they picked a, a real guy, a sincere person, uh, they didn't pick a, you know, um, <clears throat> one one that's um, overacting the role of Jesus, but someone who who actually was a suffering human along the way. Uh, I've I've just been impressed. I think it was Jesus of Nazareth, but a couple of other films I've seen. I'm like, wow, that's a that's a good choice of Jesus. Passion you know? the Christ did a good job. And what was the one we were talking about last week, Kenny? Just you and I were having a conversation about a a show, the disciples. The Chosen, yeah, that yeah. one too. Absolutely. Other other comments? Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> you know, Jesus did ascend bodily into heaven. You know, it was a glorified body that could pass through walls, but he still ate. You could touch. You know, it's, it's different, right? Yeah. yeah. We can't quite comprehend that. But he ascended bodily into heaven. It, it, nothing tells us that he, he still is had in that body. But, of course, he can be everywhere, too. So, you know, right. is God. But we can't quite comprehend that. Remember what theologian it was that was added by somebody, I don't understand the Trinity. And he says, well, I don't either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I believe it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You may not understand how a jet engine works, but you trust it. Right, but uh, I, I remember it. not long ago I was thinking about you know times when I was really hurting, really miserable and stuff, and then the thought came came to me, uh, God saying, "You think I don't know what that's like? Mm. You know, try hanging on a cross for a while. Yeah, I know what that's like." You know, so, you know, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, yeah. you know, you know God knows what it's like, you know. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Kenny. That's good. Good. Any other thoughts? Other folks? Got a hot mic here. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus knowing our suffering is is the answer to why do bad things happen. Um, he, he doesn't stop those things from happening. We could debate whether God causes them or not. But regardless of the why, the who is there. Uh, Jesus is there. One of the most powerful sermons I ever heard was from a pastor in our conference, Harold Lewis. And he uh, is a black preacher, and he was sharing his experience of being a black preacher in a predominantly white denomination. Um, and then he wraps it up by, say, by saying um, something along the lines of, you might be hurting, but have you been whipped? Have you been beaten? Have you been hung on a cross? Have you done all these things? Then get back up. Um, super powerful. Wow. So in, our, in your homes, do you guys have pictures of Jesus? Kim does? <laughs> Paula does. Tell me, about, tell me about your pictures of Jesus. It's from a friend in Pennsylvania, his little death card thing, Uh because I live in a shared house. We're not really allowed to have anything, but I have it in my mirror, because nobody's going to tell me that I can't. Yeah, yeah, good. My favorite picture of Jesus is the, uh, I think they call it the laughing Jesus. Yeah. Um, where he's, <clears throat> he's bearded and, and he, this. but his head is, yeah, his head's <laughs> cocked back and he's cracking up. I, I, yeah. I love that. The laughing Jesus, I, I think it's called. Yeah. There, there was a great book called Jesus Laughed um, by the Wittenberg Door people about the humor in, in Jesus. Kim? Anyone else? She ran away. Oh. Anyone else? 
Well, we, have, we only have one picture of Jesus, and you, you probably couldn't identify it as Jesus. I have a, a replica of a painting I picked up when I was in Palestine of uh, Palestine all bombed out, but then you have the hand of God dropping down baby Jesus and bombed out Palestine because Bethlehem is in the middle of the Gaza Strip. Um, and I think we forget that sometimes when we have debates about Israel and Palestine that you're talking about Jesus' birthplace. Um, and that God would have still dropped that baby in the middle. It was a occupied time there. It's an occupied time now, and it's just uh, it's powerful imagery of Jesus. We don't have a, Kevin. I don't think we have any other pictures of Jesus, do we? No. no. Yeah. We need Buddy Christ. No, we're not getting Buddy Christ. <laughs> well, Jesus. If we want to know what God looks like, because we cannot see God. God is. God was, God will be, but God is not bodily. Only Jesus was bodily. So Jesus is the representation for us for what God is. If you want to know what God is like, you look at what Jesus did. If you want to know uh, about God in any way, Jesus is the lens through which we as Christians look at God. So what does that mean? From what you know of Jesus, what does that mean of God? Jesus is our image of God. What does that tell us about God? Is it uh, God directing our thoughts toward him, uh, soliciting, uh, uh, his, uh, soliciting his uh, support, his um, uh, the things that we need to proceed in life and, and in order to uh, gain the eternal heaven. Sure. Right? Is sure, that where that, we're that's at? That's part of it, yeah. You like of it? Okay, I got a yeah, piece of it. that's part of it. Okay. Kenny, did you have something? Oh, sure. Big <clears throat> we're going to make him Dewey get his steps today. Oh, good. You're getting your, you're getting your steps in today, sure. Dewey. <laughs> uh, I think Jesus came... Several reasons, but one of the reasons Jesus came to earth was to give us a way to relate to God whom we can't comprehend. And he did say that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He says, nobody's seen the Father except me. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So that's God, right? That's that. It gives us a way to relate to God. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I would just add that um, <clears throat> that um, uh, uh, God create, created Himself in Jesus to show us the nature of God, the personality of God, the characteristics of God, and um, and how God reacts to the poor, how God reacts to um, the shamed, to the humble, how God reacts to the hypocrites, the people who wear religion around. And um, and I and I think in Jesus um, it is is just it's a, it's a reflection of this is this is God acting out his godness. Um, so what upset Jesus? That's what upsets God. What thrilled Jesus? That's what thrills God. So I think he um, he created himself um, to show us who he was. Um, and you guys know what I mean about creating himself, you know, part of the Trinity coming to, um, to us in Jesus' form. You know, and, and that, that was kind of his style, too. What, what did he get? Uh, I mean, what, 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 what was he so interested in communicating and all of that stuff? Um, uh, a lot of kingdom on earth stuff more than um, just, just be heavenly minded and go sit under a tree until you die. You know, it wasn't that. He, he wasn't about that. So um, I, uh, I, anyway. Yeah. Others. Talk to me about the emotions of Jesus. When was Jesus happy? Do we have any idea of a time when Jesus was happy? Betty does. Our theologian, Betty. <laughs> I think when he related to children. I think that's the beauty of that. And uh, 
there's a stained glass window we have at, at church with Jesus and the children. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the windows that we have in our church showing the various stages of the life of Christ is, is really meaningful. And then as we reflect uh, in our worship, we can relate to how it mean, what it means to us. Being a former banker, I, um, I I have a little sympathy for your statement, uh, Kim. Thank you. <laughs> However, in their defense, uh, not really. <laughs> but uh, I, I do recall an instance where he was uh, very unhappy with his disciples in that he was having to explain over and over uh, what uh, message he was trying to portray. Yeah, I think the height of his anger is seen at the, what was called the temple tantrum. There's a, a tantrum in the temple, but the the kind of burning irateness we see all the time in his disciples, right? Why haven't you got it? Why are you worried about me? Did you not feed and feed 5,000 people? Did you not feed and feed another 70,000 people? Which, yeah, um, I think uh, hypocrisy. That was one of the ones that, um, and then the love, I think, was servant love. Anytime he saw a servant love, that was when Jesus was the happiest. Um, we were discussing that um, there's not really a lot of words for love in the English language. Other languages have a lot. Yeah. English, just the one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when is the time that Jesus is sad? Several places it says he goes to heal someone because he's moved compassion. He has that sympathy with others that move him. So if Jesus had all these emotions, we can kind of embrace. I want to bring it back to embracing who we are as also embracing Christ. That Jesus took on flesh has very significant meaning for us as individuals. It means that we have a God that can relate to everything that we go through, both the suffering, the happy times, all of the emotions we have, um, and our experiences. We can embrace those, not just as something outside of church, but I think the real keys to rejuvenation and deeper growth in Christ is, to begin, is the beginning of experiencing Christ outside of this space or that space, but embracing God in the whole of your life, in the, in the, in the hunger, that we the physical hunger that we have, in the cravings that we have, in the anger that we have at society or whatever we may be angry with in the moment, because we're going to do all these things. Um, when we begin to relate to Christ in those moments, Sunday mornings, nine, ten o'clock or around eleven o'clock, to really reach out and try to be mindful of Christ's presence with you throughout your day, on your nights, in the struggles and the joys and everything in between. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are like us and we can be like you. Help us to embrace you beyond confines of a worship space, the confines of a coffee house, and into our everyday life, that we would experience who you are as we live into our own existence, realizing that we were first made in your image, but also remade in your image through Christ, uh, able to be brought to a place of wholeness and restoration. Thank you that Jesus is 
beautiful and appears in different forms to us and is so many different things. Help us not just to make you God in our own image, but to find who you are in you. Amen. <clears throat> hey, Bridget, if I could just uh, uh, make a note for the church. Um, at two this afternoon, we're having a funeral for a dear friend um, who um, is a part of our Thursday morning Bible study. And um, um, uh, Dr. John sent a note that, that uh, Russ had sent after the death of his wife la last weekend. <coughs> and uh, Pastor, uh, uh, Dr. John, um, is basically a pastor, um, sent it on to the rest of, of us men. But Russ, uh, so he's reflecting on the death of his wife. Um, and he, um, he said just what your topic is, he said, you know, my God is the God of the very good times. And my God is my God now of these, these very bad times. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's Jesus in sadness and, and death and Jesus in life and happiness. Yeah, and I would say having spent a great deal of time with the Sainer family this week, that if you um, just want to hear some good testimony, today at 2 o'clock, you can watch online as well if you don't want to come into the church later. We streamed on, on our Facebook page. They have some incredible testimony from what's happened since October 30th of this ministry. So thank you, Ron. Thank you. Welcome back, Mary. Standing there, I walk alone. Don't you see how the world keeps turning? Don't you see? Turn the page. I walk the same trail. Cause in that day. People wonder, let them laugh, let them sing. You know I love you when the world steps right in. Don't you wonder, I'll always be your friend. I try to change the world. Why? 
Go ahead. 